Hi guys and welcome to my Surfer SEO review. In this review I'm going to try to not include any fluff and just give you a uh, complete rundown of how Surfer SEO works and uh, what I think about it. I'm going to go through all the different tools such as the content editor as you see here, the audit function, the content planner, the SERP analyzer, and keyword research among a few other things as well. So as you know, um, Surfer claims that uh, you can rank better in the SERPs using their tool. I've tested it myself. I've used it for almost a year now and uh, I've seen some positive results. Um, definitely there's been some jumps in some of my pages that I've optimized with Surfer. So uh, without further ado, let's just jump into the tool to see how it works. So how would you use the content editor? So really this is for um, pages that don't even exist yet um, or for existing pages that you want to uh, say for example um, edit to make it either better, add more content, um, update it, that's and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do here first here is let's just assume that you don't have any content and you have an idea of uh, your title I guess for the for the post that you're going to be writing and I'm just I'm just trying to think in the back of my head here what it, we should write about so let's just say um, we're gonna write a blog post um, how to make money from home okay so you're gonna click on create content editor we're gonna wait for it to uh, to generate I'm just gonna put this on pause really quick and come back okay so it's completed and I'm gonna click on it and it's going to set up the editor. All right, so here we go. So you've got a blank slate. And now what you've got over here is everything that you need to create your article except for the actual content itself. However, you will be given an outline as to what keywords you should be including in your article, which is all of these. Now, if you notice, there's a huge list here. Now, you don't need to include them all. Um, Surfer recommends that you include, uh, well, the main thing is you want to get your score at first. Let's talk about that. So your score should be in the green somewhere, which is usually around like 70 or so. All right. Um, you don't have to have 100. Um, I went crazy once and I did like 100 at one point, but uh, anywhere in the green is considered good. So to do that, you normally you would have to fill this section here uh, or use most of the keywords in the kind of like the top quarter right and then a few sprinkled around usually the ones near the top um, are the most important right so that's for the keywords um, now for the headings um, it will also suggest what headings in your article that you should use and NLP stands for natural language processing it's um, I go into that greater detail in my article I have a separate review for Surfer, which you can look at. I'm not going to discuss that here. I just want to show you how it works for the most part. Okay, so that's where you get all your keywords. Um, now, the content structure. So this is all based on competition. So let me just click on, on the top here, and I'll show you the competition. So these are all the competitors that are ranking on page one. Right. So what you can do is sometimes um, Google will have like a weird suggestion, so you don't have to include it. But let's just say that um, we want to include um, these ones as well. Um, Forbes we're not going to include because Forbes just writes about everything. So I'd, I'd rather go for sites that um, or pages that are specific to um, the actual article and are kind of the whole site is kind of centered around, in this case, kind of like money making online sort of thing. So, and a lot of times you'll find things like um, review sites that have strictly just, uh, I'm trying to think of one of the major review sites, I can't think of the top of my head right now, but um, you get the point. Just choose ones that are most relevant, right? And a lot of times, Surfer is going to actually suggest which ones are relevant anyway. All right, so let's just say we've got our picks. You're going to click on Let's Go. So it's going to look at all those sites, right? Get Capture all the data. And this is how it comes up with these keywords. Because it's all based on the pages that are ranking on page one. All right, so the idea here is to 
be like the guys that are ranking already. All right. If you have similar content, you should rank. Now, there are other factors involved, which we're not going to discuss in this article, which is the off-page SEO. But we're just focused on on-page SEO, which is what Surfer excels in. Okay. So the word count for this particular subject should be between 4 to 6,600 and 5,300. You should, ha you should have about 44 to 107 headings, paragraphs, at least 118, and about 16 to 56 images. So there's a pretty fair range in between the two. So there's a lot of, of uh, leeway here. All right. Um, so now let's go to outline. All right. So the outline builder is going to suggest titles for H1s. You don't have to use these, um, but you can. Um, if we go back to outline, uh, where is it? Sorry. Okay, so outline, what did I want to do? Okay, yeah, so headings. Um, this is kind of important because you're, this is going to give you a guideline as to what to write in your article. So if you're not sure what to write, you can just look at all these headings, right, and get ideas. You know, like get a remote job position. No, don't do that. Um, before I start making my line from home, uh, engage in retail arbitrage, dive into online education, sell your own creations, start a blog, highly recommended, uh, create and sell printables, and so forth. So these are all kind of ideas on what to do um, to, um, you know, ideas how to make money working from home. It's not specific to online because it just says make money from home. So it could be something that, uh, you know, is, is, is offline too, right? So you may want to write an article where it's how to make money from home online, right? Something like that, which includes online if you only want to talk about making money online. All right, um, next section is questions. So this is really handy if you want to uh, have an FAQ section or if you want to answer questions within your article. As you probably noticed when you do a Google search, it's going to show uh, lots of questions. So if you do answer those questions, you may actually start ranking for them. So it, it does help. So questions should be a big part of your article as well. All right, so we've gone over um, titles, headings, and questions. Um, brief, this is just uh, your competitors, right? You can get, you can, you've, you've already seen them by clicking on here, right? But um, you can look at that as well. All right, so what happens when you start writing? The best way to illustrate this is I'm just going to go back. I'm going to go back and I'm going to choose an article that I actually wrote but I didn't optimize too much. All right. So this one is a complete article on my blog, how to choose a blog, the complete guide. All right. And as you see, um, I still have some more words to go. All right. I should probably write another 2,000 words. Um, paragraphs, I should have more. Headings, I should have more. And images, I should have more. Actually, this is not true because I didn't include images in here but on the actual post uh, there's more images all right so just to illustrate how this works let's just say that um, let's see which one I'm missing okay so name your blog I'm missing that so what you're gonna do is you're not gonna do this you're, just, you're not gonna I'm just gonna show you for illustration purposes um, name your blog now what's really cool is that it will actually um, suggest for you the keywords that you should include while you're writing all right only do this if it makes sense but in this case, if you just hit, um, oh, what is it here? Yeah, just um, the tab key. It'll bring it over. All right. So as you see, name your blog and include it in this score. I believe jumped. I can't remember if I did or not, but let's just choose another word here. Hold on. Um, blog niche. Blog niche. And score jumps up to 66. All right. Um, let's choose another one. Blog naming formulas. Blog naming formulas. And jumps up to, oh, it's still 66. Uh, unique blog name ideas. Unique blog name ideas. Come on, surfer. Um, blog name generator tool. Blog name generator tool. Right? And it's not jumping up. <laughs> okay, well, it doesn't always jump up, but you get the idea. Eventually, it actually will. Um, this is why I said you don't need to include all the keywords. Include ones that actually make sense. Um, uh, words. All right, and we're still not up. Blog name, a few more ideas. Same letter. Some of the words are kind of weird. So. 
this is one thing I'm not happy about with with Surfer, is that it's not perfect. Um, but when you enter in some keywords, it doesn't always go up. So just because you enter in a keyword doesn't mean it's going to automatically go up. I think it just kind of like reads everything together. Here's a here's a big one: blog post. That one should improve it, and it doesn't. Create a blog. Let's try that one. And it still hasn't uh, gone up. Go figure. When I'm trying to record a YouTube video, that happens. But anyway, you get the idea. Now, you're obviously not going to write it like this. Okay, you're going to you're going to want to include it in the content. Now, so how do you do that? So what you do is. See, I actually did jump. It was at 66. Now it's back down to 61. So, because I deleted a whole bunch. All right. So, if you want to um, say, for example, you have something here under uh, blog names. Okay. Um, if you're not sure what how to write about blog names, what you can do is you can just click on it, and it's going to give you some actual text. Now, you're not going to use this um, in your in your uh, post because this is. Uh, content that exists already. All this is is a guide to explain what blog names mean. So in this case, this is also a good time to find out if any of the blog names you're thinking of are already being used, blah, blah, blah. So for any any word that you um, see in here, you can just click on it and it will give context to that word, right? So you understand what it means and how to use it in your, in your, uh, in your actual uh, article, all right? So use these words wherever it makes sense. Um, but you're going to start off really with headings, right? To choose uh, which headings you want to include in your article, and there's there's a whole bunch, All right? And they even will show you the subheadings for each. So this is this gives you a good idea of what um, you can write about and what you should actually include in uh, your your post. Now another thing is is Surfer has a built-in AI. Um, so this content here, let me just scroll down here. So if I click on this, it'll import uh, the heading and the content. Now this content is actually unique because this is not being pulled from other blogs. This is what Surfer's AI Writer is coming up with. Okay, But you're not going to use this verbatim. You're going to actually have to edit this because it's not perfect. Uh, it's not bad, but you can use this as a guideline. All right, it's not Now, you probably have heard of um, of uh, Jasper AI. Um, I have done a review on that. You can also check out my Jasper AI, AI review as well. Uh, Jasper does a much better job in writing content for you, um, which is kind of why um, Surfer SEO and Jasper AI have combined forces, right? So um, you can still use Surfer alone um, and have some unique content written for you, but you're going to be doing a lot more work. Surfer is really just for actually uh, getting your content right. It's not so much about um, you know having it the content written for you. That's what Jasper does, but that's an entirely different review, which you can check out. Anyway, so that's pretty much it for the content editor. All right. So the next one we're going to do is the audit. So what is the audit function used for? The audit function is um, it's only used for existing pages. Um, there's many things that uh, the audit function or the tool does look at. It looks at uh, things like content score, missing common backlinks, internal links, uh, terms to use, what your word count is, and uh, if those words are working for you or not, exact keywords, partial keywords, uh, looks at title and meta description length, um, looks at uh, site speed, like uh, time to first byte, and also load time. So all you have to do is you just enter in the URL of your page right here. You can put some um, keywords here if you want, but that's entirely optional. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at an existing piece of content. Um, on my site already. So let's just choose this one here, best email marketing software. So I'm going to let it load and uh, we're going to see what happens here. All right. So here is what Surfer suggests um, to make 
changes to improve my content, right? So my content score is 64, which should be a little bit higher. All right, so if I click on show details, all right, it's going to show me all the all the competitors for um, this particular page, right? Or sorry, for this uh, for this actual uh, title, right? This content that we're writing about, right? So here's all the uh, different sites that are ranking for this particular term and comparing it to content score. My score is 64 and all these are a different different score. So I'm not too bad, but I can still improve. All right, missing common backlinks. All right, so these are the pages. A lot of the uh, common pages that are ranking for this particular term get backlinks from these different sites, which is what I can look at as well. Um, internal links. So internal links, when you click on that, it's going to show you different uh, internal links that you, or different pages that you can link from to this article. Um, it doesn't always give you accurate results. So this is one thing I was not too happy about, but it can definitely help. So if you find pages that make sense, just you can use that. Um, terms to use. So here's some terms that I haven't used that I probably can use or just use more. Um, but for example, you know, email marketing software. So I already used it five times. It suggests to use it between six and 16. That honestly, you don't really need to make any changes with. That's good enough in my opinion. What do you want to look at is one that you haven't actually used, right? Email marketing software platforms. I haven't used that. Right, and I should use it between one and two times. Um, marketing software, I use it six times, so I'm within that threshold of six to 16, which that's why it says all good. Um, let's look for another zero, okay. Active campaign, active campaign. I don't know why that's twice, but anyway, um, we'll just ignore that one. Let's look for another zero here. Email marketing services, okay. I don't use that, that's a, that's a pretty good term. I should use that, right? It's suggested two to seven, so I should throw that one in there. There's no email marketing service, so I don't, haven't used it. Um, so I should use that as well two to ten times. All right, you get the idea. Okay, word counts. Um, so it wants me to add a whopping 5,232 to 11,800 or whatever words in my body. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of words to add. So um, I can definitely work on content count as well. Um, then it also talks about adding words in H2, paragraphs, and uh, bolding as well. Okay, exact keywords, uh, no action required, great. Uh, parser keywords, uh, this one's been add some parser keywords per 100 words in body. What does this mean? Well, it compares me to other uh, sites, right? So you can look at all this data to see what, uh, you can just go in the details and you'll understand what uh, that means when you're doing your audit. Page structure is not too bad. You know, there's no reds, uh, title and Meta description length, I can add 9 for 24 characters. I can probably improve that, not a huge deal. Um, good to know, no action required for meta description. Time to first bite and load time is very good. That's because I use Cloudways as my as my host. Um, anyway, um, that's it for the content, or sorry, the audit. The next thing we're going to jump over is the content planner. So what is the purpose of the content planner? So if you have a topic that's very difficult to rank for, so one strategy is that you write supporting content that is related to the subject that you're trying to rank. Okay, so this shows Google that you're an authority in that particular subject because you have similar written content about it and it supports your main article. Um, with the Surfer Content or Surfer's SEO Content Planner, um, it does all this for you uh, with some pretty good keyword research. So all you really do is you just enter in a keyword here. So let's just go with um, uh, what was the other one that we had here? Hold on. Yeah, I think we went had the how to make money from home, and we'll just click on the Content Planner. Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna put this on pause while I think, so you guys don't have to wait forever. Okay, so it's completed. So when we click on it, it's going to bring you to all these clusters from our main topic, which is, there's 104 of them. 
So you don't have to do all these as supporting content for your main subject, for your main article, how to make money from home, but um, you can definitely incorporate some. Now, if one important thing I want to show you here is the intent, right? So informational, um, this is really based on what on um, people just kind of looking for information. They're not ready to buy like a course or, or something to t show them how to make money from home. They're just kind of like looking at some ideas, right? So you're gonna, definitely going to want to have some type of informational posts. Uh, customer investigation. This is um, kind of like more to do with um, if there is a particular type of product that is uh, available to uh, to buy that you can sell as like a affiliate income or something like that right so there's different types of uh, intent that you can choose from um, shopping is definitely a lot more to do with e-commerce and such but uh, for this I would strongly suggest with that you go with just informational you can also choose them both and just look for something that makes sense right um, a lot of these like money you're not going to write just about money that's just too broad right look for something um, that would really work well like for example if you could write an article on side hustles side gigs um, make money from stocks right all these have to do with making money from home right um, writing um, make money from your car okay uh, yeah right so for everyone, every every uh, query that you type in here, it's going to give you a whole bunch of ideas to write about, which is going to support your main article. So you're going to link from the pages or articles that you write in this section. You're going to link that to your main page, right? Which would be your money page. Say if your money page has like affiliate products on it, right? So you want to obviously make money, so you're going to promote that with other content to give it an SEO boost. That's the whole point of this, right? To make the article look important because if you have a whole bunch of articles that are pointing to one main article, it's going to tell Google that, hey, this article is important because all these other articles talk about this subject and they're pointing or they're linking to it, right? So that's the whole idea of the, of the content planner. So the next one is the um, SERP analyzer. Now this one, I, I to be honest with you, I, I don't really use that much. Um, if I want to geek out, I will. But uh, for this one here, um, I actually uh, wrote about this on my blog post for my uh, Surfer SEO review. You can see it on my site. Um, what I've done was I just use this as a search term, enter it in, and this is what you get in the SERP analyzer. So what it really does is it compares um, this particular page to all your competitors, right? And you can look at different things like keywords, questions, popular words, popular phrases, common words, and so on, right? And then it's going to show you all the different scores for a lot of the other um, websites that are also ranking for this particular keyword term. So it's definitely, if you want to really get a lot of data, um, then you're going to want to use the SERP analyzer. So the next one is the keyword research tool. So what you do is, um, if you have an idea for uh, an article and you know what the keyword is, um, or you just want to kind of like brainstorm different uh, keywords based on a subject, then you can just enter that in here. So what I've done was, um, we'll just use the example of affiliate marketing. So I've already used a search for that. And here's what Surfer suggests, okay? so. You've got a few choices here. You've got similar keywords to affiliate marketing, which is all these, right? And it's going to give you the SERP similarity and also the search volume for each one of these terms. If you click on having same terms, right, it's going to include um, these ones here. Now, what does that mean? So having same term means all keywords that contain all of the terms of any target keyword in any order, okay? And it's going to just give you the search volume for those as well. Right, and then questions. Um, questions are at least two from the top 20 pages ranking for affiliate marketing. Also rank for these keywords. Right, so um, the, these are other related keywords that rank for affiliate marketing as well. Right, and it's usually it's based on 
question types like what is affiliate marketing um, yeah as you can see there's there's quite a few I'm gonna be honest with you, this I'm not too crazy about the uh, the keyword research tool from surfer um, tools like Ahrefs is so much better it includes so much more information but if you don't want to spend money on uh, keyword research tools uh, then you'll want to uh, stick with uh, you can you can definitely use this one but another tool that I do strong suggest is keywords everywhere check that out it's very very inexpensive and it's much better than this tool right but this is basic tool. I have a feeling that eventually um, Surfer is going to actually improve upon this one but for now it's not bad so the other feature that I really like is that you're able to connect Google Search Console with Surfer SEO when you do this um, you're just going to get a lot more accurate data about uh, your domains and it's going to help you with uh, various different tools as well because the information that you get back will be a lot more detailed than it would be without it. And another feature that Surfer just uh, came out of beta is uh, called Growflow. So really it just uh, it gives you a bunch of tasks that you can do every week. Um, in some cases it'll tell you, you know, what um, different blog posts you should write about it'll tell you uh, you know some keywords that are missing on certain articles but you can pretty much get that with the other tools I haven't used it too much but it's it's not bad because it kinda kinda keeps you motivated on a weekly basis to complete certain tasks so I'll let you know all about Surfer um, you know that uh, it's actually a, a great tool and it's gonna definitely help people that are either new or existing uh, small businesses or bloggers right so it's it's definitely a good tool and uh, you can try it out for free um, I'm just gonna talk to you about the pricing plans now so I'm headed over my blog right now and you can see there's a free plan you don't get all the tools but uh, you'll be able to at least try out some of the features once you um, think that you want to keep it you can progress to the basic plan which is $59 a month or $49 a month if you want to pay it for the year the whole year the pro plan most people are not going to need I have the pro plan um, but you can pay uh, either 119 a month or for uh, 11 eight a year it's kind of pricey but um, you know monthly is not too bad and you can always downgrade as well to this plan if you don't need it so I would just start off with the basic plan um, you can jump in with the free plan right away but start off with the basic plan because you really get all the tools this is not going to help you much to be honest with you but um, at least it'll, you'll get your feet wet so that's it for pricing so anyway um, there's also the Jasper and SEO integration which I talked about if you want to learn more about Jasper that if, if and if I ramble too much in this review you can head over to my to my blog post um, on uh, Surfer SEO review which I will leave in the comments below and um, you can also grab it from me as well uh, if you do I do get a commission just to let you know but hey that's it's not going to cost you anymore and uh, you can always email me and let me know how it's helped you I would love to get a, a personal ref review from you as well you can even leave comments on this page as well if um, this has helped and uh, until next time Thank you for listening to this very long video. It's been almost half an hour. And take care and happy surfing.